Okay, let's start. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jeffrey Hanrahan. I'm with the Academic Technologies Department at the University of Notre Dame. What we do is we investigate new technologies or existing technologies that will help professors teach, students learn, and to help research. So one of the things that we worked on is we had a pilot program uh, using first-generation iPads and some Galaxy 10 tablets to say, what can we use this? Would this stuff work in a university environment? Or is it just something that's gee whiz and we don't really need it? So we had this, uh, we had teachers participate in the program, use the iPads, Galaxy Pads, they changed out, gave us their feedback, and they started developing content for the, for the iPad side. We had one professor do an app, a Shakespeare app that he uses in his class. We have another professor who created a book that he uses in his class, and he uses the iTunes U um, classwork stuff. And so this is nice because instead of finding a use for iPads, we have a need to use the iPads. So that's something that um, is important to us. And before I start, what I like to do is survey the crowd here. Um, I've got some questions I like to ask. And if you can raise your hands so that long enough that I can count it, I would appreciate it. Uh, how many of you currently have an iPad program in use right now? Okay. How many of you are planning or about to have an iPad program? That's five. How many have an iPad team of just one person? <laughs> Keep your hands. <laughs> yeah, I think we're all in the same boat here. How many have two to three people in your iPad team? Oh, you're the lucky ones. That's nine. How many of you have four or more people? That's probably stretching it. How many of you are currently uh, using the uh, older iPhone configuration utility? And this might be because you have uh, iPad generation one still in existence. I know we do. Okay, nobody. How many of you are currently using Apple Configurator? Okay. How many are using Apple Profile Manager? Okay, that's 13. How many of you have the iPads brought upon you without any specified purpose for them. Whoa! <laughs> I might have to take off my shoes to count. <laughs> okay. How many of you had the iPads brought upon you with a specific purpose already established. Okay. How many of you lease iPads to students on an as-needed basis, like a library book? Okay. How many of you lease iPads to students on a single semester? You guys will have some problems. How many of you lease iPads to students by an academic year? How many of you lease iPads to students for the total years that they're at the university 
or your institution, like two or four years. Okay, there's one. How many of you allow the students to purchase the iPad after they graduate from your institution? Well, that's pretty good. So this crowd's having fun, I could tell. We had a uh, intern for a year, and he handled the uh, iPad Generation 1 and Galaxy 10 uh, tablet program as a get our feet wet and get, get used for it. When he left, they said, hey, Jeff, you're now doing that. And then, by the way, we have 150 of these coming in in about a month, and they're going to be deployed in about four weeks. So we needed a way of being the only person doing this stuff. And they would throw people at you. You know, you know it's not just me that had to do anything. But if I needed help, I would get bodies you know, thrown. So what I did was I documented the procedures that we followed. So all those that are starting up a program, We've, we've got enough slides in here to show you some of the things we've learned. And for you folks that have an iPad program already in progress, maybe there's some things that you can pick up. And I think there's some things that you'll say, gee whiz, I didn't know that. Or, or that's cool. Or wow, Apple really does that. So what I'm, go, what I'm going to go over is the overview. And some of these will be fairly quick. And the first one is, what is Pro, Profile Manager? and why you'd want to use it in the first place. Because you have Apple Profiler. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, Apple Configurator. And with all those iPads, you need to inventory and tag them. And then you have to deploy those. So if you have these 150 iPads that you have to configure for use, you have to get them to the students in some shape or form. So. Uh, we addressed that situation. And when you get them, where do you store all these iPads? You know, 150, it's two boxes, and it goes down to here. And then you have iPad cases to protect them, right? So that's more boxes here. And then if you take all that stuff out of the boxes, we don't even bother doing that. So we, we decided, how do we do this cheap, simple, and easy? So what we ended up doing, actually, is configuring. On a Wednesday, we began barcoding the iPads and collecting serial numbers. We started at 1. We finished at 4. They were done. Then we turned over the iPads to our bookstore, and then they distributed those to the students when they would come in for their books. So it was like a one-shop stop for the students. We didn't want them to go to the bookstore for their books and then come to us for iPads. We worked out a deal, and they did the charging for the leasing. And that worked pretty well. And so by Friday, the students had it, and we gave the bookstore a roster to make sure that the uh, correct students actually got the right iPads. <coughs> so we're also going to go over the profile manager and settings. And like I said, we use iPhone configuration utility and it's similar to Apple Configurator. It's pretty similar. So um, those should be a fairly easy transfer um, to, to move those settings that you've already established onto the profile manager. And then there's issues that we came across uh, using the software and things that we found and the way the server behaves and the way the software was supposed to work and the features that we expected and they weren't quite there. And we'll also deal with the student return of iPads. So when you've sent all these 158, 150 iPads out, how do you make sure you get them all back? And then where do they return them to? And 
we, I will show you the observations. Since this was a pilot program, we could be a little bit sloppy in some of the stuff we did. And we wanted to see how some of the things panned out. But I think from what we learned here, we got to uh, tie things down a little tighter. And there were some reported iPad problems from the students. So I'll share those with you. And then there's the what have we learned and how will we do things differently. And then there's the policy, procedures, and accountability. These are the questions that, as you are the ones maintaining these iPads, this is for your higher ups to figure out. And then we'll have uh, questions and answers. So what is the profile manager? Well, it's actually uh, server software, and it, there's three parts to it. There is the web-based administrator tool. So this allows you to use your laptop, your desktop, and even an iPad to add, delete, change profiles, create profiles, and basically set all your configurations. You can tell the iPad to reboot. You can clear it. You can reset students' passwords if they forget them all through the web. And then there's also the self-service user portal. What this does, instead of having a web page with a policy file, what the students do is, as soon as they, we have them open up the iPad right out of the box, brand spanking new, they go through the configuration, they connect through Wi-Fi, then they're instructed to launch Safari and go to a web page that the profile manager server is dishing up. And then they will be presented with a dialog to install the policies. And once they install them, then all those wonderful settings that you've applied get applied to that iPad right then and there. There's also a mobile device management, MDM portion of the profile manager. And what that allows you to do is make all of the policy settings uh, on the server to be applied to all of your profiles. It allows the, you can uh, force all the up iPads to update. So if there's any security updates or anything, or if you make any changes to your policy, you can push those down. And it's also good for asset tracking. Once the user has logged in, once they've downloaded those policies, it collects their name and information about the machine, like there's the serial number, the iOS version, the username, the Wi-Fi address. So you now have a record of everything about that machine without having to plug it into, say, Apple Configurator. So that was the nice thing that we like. So we didn't have to really touch those 150 devices. We didn't have to open them up, check for the serial number, plug them into Configurator, wait a couple minutes. Profile Manager did that all for us without even having to do it. But now Profile Manager has some limits. It's a lightweight system, so it can handle up to 5,000 devices comfortably, and it can comfortably handle 200 to 300 concurrent connections. So if you create groups, say classrooms, and you want to update things, then keeping the amount of updates under 300 at a time, you won't bring down the server and, and things will still work for you. And just as a side note, we are tied into the active domain and we use Exchange for email. So those are kind of nice. So now we have all of these uh, iPads and cases delivered to our department. And I'm gonna go into the detailed um, uh, the details so that anyone new to this will have procedures to go by. You know, one of the things that I've noticed in, in some of the conferences is you, 
don't want to really present like just the profile manager because how does that fit? You know, what are the steps before you get to the profile manager? And what are the steps you do after the profile manager? You know, if, if I just tell you how to do that, it's like, okay, so I know how to do that. What do I do before that? So I'll go into some of these things that it's kind of trivial, but some of the information. So the one thing that we did was we had the iPads and cases brought to us. We didn't want to go, you know, have them delivered to the bookstore or anything like that. So we had them come to us, and the bookstore actually had some of these drawstring bags. So we could put the iPad in there. We could put the, um, the protective case in there. We could put the power supply, the cable, the student agreement that they must sign, and also the instructions for how the student's supposed to configure the iPads. And you want to obtain a class list for the professor, from the professor. You need to know how many iPads to configure for their class. And then there's a little bit of play. You know, maybe the initial list is, in our case, 100 for one class. Then it went to 101. Then it went to 105. So you need to have a little bit of play. And by having a good rapport with the professor, they'll provide you with the list and all that. And the big thing is, I don't want to open 150 boxes. I don't know if how many <laughs> uh, how many iPads are we talking about that you guys support out here? Oh, jeez, was that an all one-time deal? Okay, I hope you have lots and lots of space. You will need it, and. I didn't want to open those up. I mean, after one day of doing that, you you start pulling the muscles in your fingers and your fingers get raw. And the thing that we want to do is we want to barcode each iPad and then collect that into a spreadsheet. And this is something that's kind of bad because it would be nice that um, there's an easier, there's gotta be an easier way of doing it, but there isn't. So what we do is on the box, okay, so you have a box from Apple that has 10 iPads in it. So we open the box, we lift up one, barcode it, because it has the serial number, and we do that for all 150. So that is the extent of our hands-on with, with the iPads. And we save those to a spreadsheet because we will need that to import those serial numbers into the profile manager so that when they attach the device, it, those devices can be found. And what we learned this time is you really want to assign a student name to each device. What we did that wasn't so great We had one professor with two classes using 25 iPads. We had another professor with 105 iPads. And so we knew what iPads were delegated for each class. And we simply put a name, this is this professor's iPads, this is this professor's iPads. And as the students would get these and register them, we would know the identity of the student who did that. But what it turns out to be, 42 of the students didn't register the devices. So, you know, we had to play that, you know, the Sherlock Holmes routine on them. We have the roster. We know who were the good citizens and registered. And by crossing them off, we know the, the, the ones who did not register. But there was a problem because there were 24 students on that roster who had their own iPads. So now you have 42 you're trying to hunt down, and you have 24 that have their own, and you don't know which ones they are. So when they come back to you at the end of the semester, we had them put their name and email on a piece of paper, slide it in, and hand it to us with the iPad, 
and we were able to get them all back and know which one was used. That was scary. That was very scary. So we learned from that. It's a pilot. We can do stuff like that. And so I would recommend create labels for each class for the student and attach it to the box. It will make your life simpler. And I will make reference to the iPhone configuration utility. Has anybody ever used that in the past? You know, it has a lot of steps, but the really good thing is, whatever machine you plug into that, it pulls all the information, and you've got a really nice list, all in a glance. And then if you select that device, the window below will have all the pertinent information that you need. It's sort of like uh, we're using it as a, uh, like a database, and it's worth going through the extra step. And strangely enough, the iPhone configuration utility will still work on the iOS iPad. I tried it out, it works. But you really don't want to be doing that. And when you have those 600 iPads coming, be sure to take one for yourself. And it's not to be used as a spare. It's not to be used as a loaner, and nobody is allowed to borrow it. And learn to say no to people. You need that device to test. You will blow it away numerous times testing things. You always want to have it available. You don't want anybody else to have it. Remember that. You, that is an important thing. And if you are the only support person, start three weeks before the iPads are needed so that you're not pressed for time. Now, does this look familiar? This is the information on the iPad. This is the model number, and this is the serial number, but I had to blur it out. This is a penny. That is larger than the text of this. So you wonder why I say barcode the serial number of the box it's in. Because you're not going to get that number right if you look at it. And if you don't have a magnifying glass, it would be a good thing to have one. Another item is the model number. Um, these are the retina models, and this particular model is A1458. If you go inside the iPad itself, under the settings and about, it'll have something like M4055LL-A. That is the ordering number of that product. This number will tell you all about the device. If it's a white or black bezel, how much RAM it has, um, if it's set up for Wi-Fi or uh, IMEI or MEID. And if you have these numbers, they're important. Most of these you will see, if they exist, they'll be on, on here somewhere. So my recommendation, use the serial number. The serial number is the definitive ID of the pad. Now, the UDID, hey, we love that, right? It's like the unique telephone number of the iPad. Well, as of May 1st, Apple discontinued uh, using those. They're no longer supported. Um, it, it deals with uh, sandboxing issues. So you don't want to use the UDID. If you harvest it, it's absolutely no good. But that text is small. So what we do, we create our own Barker labels. We take, uh, we use a, you know, a label, we use Word and Avery labels, and use a barcode font. And we put the device name, 
we, we assigned it a logical device name, and we also put the serial number on there. And we use a clear tape so that it looks nice. And, and the reason for that is it's hard to read that number. But if you have a barcode, it's beep, beep, and you got both of them. And the reason is more things that we need to do. You have a case. So put another barcode on the case itself, because you don't want to have to peel that case back every time you want to check. And you notice the special identification at the top. That's my iPad. Nobody gets that. Nobody touches that. That's, that's the one I pull out for configuring everything. So you should have something like that. And we don't care if the students pull those off or if they get torn or they're unreadable. Just slap another one on. We also put one on the back. We put the iPad in a box, upside down, the label right side up. We get to plug in all these devices. So here, that's your model number. We use AT as a group description, and then the device number, this, the, the number of the human readable number. So if we have 150, that one is number 105 out of 150. And likewise, if that label comes off, we slap another one right over it. Now, for now, we charge these iPads. You know, this is the plan B charging. Um, we have a plastic case. Uh, this shows only seven iPads, because we only had seven outlets that we could plug in. The cases will hold 15, so you will need 10 boxes, 10 of these boxes, and some place to put them uh, when they're not in use, and that takes up space. Plan A, or plan, plan A, was to use printer, an empty printer paper box. But that was kind of hokey, you know, we wanted to go one step up. And then we go, well, we want to go one more step higher than that. So we bought one of these uh, new Apple uh, carts. And uh, it just came in before I left for the conference. So uh, I haven't had time to play with it. It's the charging and with the USB hub, the, the full-fledged jobby. Yep. You can put a laptop on the top. There's cables in a compartment at the top. You can plug the USB in. And then through Apple Configurator, you can put an image onto all of those. And that card holds 30. And you can lock it. We don't have the staff for moving the stuff around. So it's like, hey, we just, like, figure out the technology you use, somebody else needs to do the maintaining of it. So there is a, a classroom support group, so they can be pushing the cart to like a classroom that needs them for, say, a week, and, and that should work out. So we wanted to deploy these, so we partnered with the Follett Bookstore, and they were they came up with the, the bag, which is really, we never thought about that. They go, hey, we've got some extra bags from textbook sales. And so here's the, the box with the uh, case. We have our instruction manual, the student agreement. There's the iPad. That's the barcode. That, that's the Apple's barcode of the serial number. So when you pull it out of the Apple case, that's the one, the one you want to barcode and not these. We give them the uh, iPod cable, we give them the iPod power supply. And the nice thing about the bookstore, they do the charging. We don't have a point of entry sale in our department, so it's great that they can do that. And they're given a list of uh, the students. So the student would go into the bookstore, they would collect their books, and for the one class, it's a piece of paper that says, take this to the desk for your iPad. And they would present it to the bookstore. 
they would check that student's name against the roster and say, yes, you are entitled to an iPad for this professor's class, and they would hand this stuff out. So that was really sweet. Now, when they came back, the bags kind of sag and, and become unmanageable. So the other plan is put them in a two-gallon Ziploc bag, and you can see everything that's in there. And not much of a footprint, but it works OK. And this isn't really meant to be read. I mean, this is just here to say we have a student agreement. The students will not be issued an iPad unless they sign this. So if, if a student says, no, I'm not signing that, it's like, goodbye. You know, I hope you pass your class. And basically, it says you agree to return. And you can modify this for, for your own institution. It tells the student they will return everything that we gave them. And at the end of the course, or if they drop out the course, and never to leave the iPad attended, and to keep it in the case. And if, they, if the iPad is lost, damaged, or stolen, they're to notify us and not to jailbreak it, and to use it responsibly within the university guidelines. And the big thing is print large and legible. Big. We want to see that. There was some where it's, I think there's so many doctors that are going to come out of this program. Um, the bookstore was very proactive, because we just supplied one student agreement with every iPad. And, and they helped us out, where they made, a, made this into a three-part form. So they kept one copy. They gave one copy to the student. And we got one copy. So that was nice of them to, to think about that. Yes, if you have more than one person working for yeah. your stuff. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. It could be like an assigned thing where their name's nice and printed and you have their email address and you just get their signature. That would definitely work. Because I spent like three days going over these things and checking them off against the roster and say, who is this? And so for managing the iPad profiles, there's actually the three, the, the old iPhone configuration utility, which apparently nobody but me uses. Um, I use it because it gives us a great device list. And, but then you'd still have to plug in each device and it launches iTunes. But with the generation one iPads, uh, you can skip the Wi-Fi registration. But if you use the new iOS ones, there's a point where you can't continue the, the uh, setup unless you provide your Wi-Fi credentials. And you don't want to supply your own. You want to make sure the students supply theirs. And the reason for that is if, if I supply my credentials to 150 machines, besides taking a couple of days, it'll register the device under my name. And if anybody violates any kind of... Uh, uh, a movie agreement. We had one of these issues last year where a student had like a movie service on their laptop and they, they had an iPad so they copied that over to the iPad but they forgot to remove it from their laptop so they then had two machines and were in violation of the copyright and they were issued a cease and disorder and then I get this email saying, I, one of my devices, hello, Jeffrey, you're in, you're in, in uh, violation of somebody's copyright. And it's like, crap. You know, I don't know whose this is. You know, I've got like 400 to 1,000 uh, MAC address assigned to my name. So having the Wi-Fi address and who the user is is a good thing. And having them uh, authenticate with the Wi-Fi is the best way to go. And if you use Apple configuration, you have to plug all 150 in 
uh, at some point in time. That's going to take a while. Whereas Apple Profile Manager, you're all set to go. But that, that one kicker, they must register. Each student must go, must launch Safari and register that device. So I'm not sure how you address that issue. Yes. Yeah, it's like unless you, and then, and, and then you're forever like, you're, you're <laughs> it's like you start out with a spreadsheet and then you populate it from the registered names on the profile manager and then you have to pull the names from the roster and then you got to pull the names from the drop ad sheets and it gets to be, it takes like three days to do it. Um, yeah, and what we found out See, we use the profile manager because one of the things we didn't have to do is restrict the students from loading apps. We allowed students to load apps and free apps and purchase apps. Yes? In two weeks it's going to be. <laughs> We didn't have to do that for this semester. So for apps deployment, Apple Profile Manager will not deploy apps. Whether they're purchased or free, it's not going to happen. It's, it's like a one-trick pony, very limited. So, if, so you would use Apple Configurator. If you, need, uh, purchase, uh, if you need purchased apps or free apps in use of the class, you, you need to go through Apple Configurator. And we're going to be doing that in two weeks. Right. They will, any app that they purchase, um, that is associated with their Apple ID. So when these iPads come back to us, we blow them away. The stu students still have them under their accounts, and, and when you start to deploy apps, though, we haven't done that. Right. Yeah, right. we're doing that in like two weeks. So now we're kind of switching from Profile Manager to Apple Configurator right. because Apple Configurator will allow you to install purchased and free apps. So why can't Profile Manager do that? So but in that scenario, the apps that you're putting on. No, those will reside with the account that it's created. So it'll be something like we'll probably have like a custom account. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and then you can. Yeah. Yes. And so what do the students get out of this? Well, they get to pick up their iPad at the same place they pick up their books. And like I said, they must sign that student agreement form. If they don't sign it, they don't get an iPad. And in the past, when we had the earlier pilot, um, a class time would be wasted. There were times where we had the smaller classes come down to our department or the larger classes, we'd go into the classroom and we'd lose an entire class period just saying, okay, everybody do this, everybody do that. And then there were like some machines 
that had to be uh, handheld and, and things like that. So this way, you don't have any wasted class period. And you can configure it, they can configure it at their own convenience. You know, what happens when you have 100 students trying to update against a Wi-Fi point? It's going to take that down. So they would be, you know, picking these iPads up whatever time of the day or afternoon and configure it whatever, and so you'll have a very low uh, pull on any of the Wi-Fi uh, points. And then for the policies, there's just one place that they have to go, you know, that website. They don't have to go to another one, download a policy and drop it on anything, and then go somewhere else for another one. So it's kind of like a all-in-one shop spot. So what are the administrator benefits? What do you get out of this? Well, you don't have 150 students visiting you, either all at one time, or, or you have to be at your desk for the next three weeks to uh, help the students configure. And then you don't have to spend four minutes uh, like going through Configurator. You don't have to go to every device, and you don't max out the wireless connections in that location. And if you make a change, we have uh, two of the classrooms, we use Apple TV, and we set up policies to use that. And one room wasn't finished when we you know, sent these uh, iPads to the bookstore. So three days after classes began, the router was installed for the last um, AirPlay uh, and for Apple TV. So I simply went into the profile settings for that class, made the changes to the router name and the password, and I just pushed it to everyone. And they're not even aware that it happened. It happens all behind the scenes. Through, yeah, configurator. We're gonna to have to touch everyone. Right. Right. Yep. We're not going to do that. We're going to treat that as a consumable right, item. So we don't want to have to touch all those devices. So we're trying to design. So you'll be doing what we did. We're trying to design a workflow where we say, here it is. If, if we do volume purchase codes, those will be put into a mailverse document given to the kids. They redeem it themselves. They set up their Apple ID with school credentials, hopefully. And, and, and some. They install their own stuff. Right. And some of these apps now. You have to rethink them. Um, you know, an app that's a dollar or two, think of it as a, as a pen or a floppy disk. It's like a disposable media. I mean, you gotta change the way you think about things. Yes. Um, so we used to actually sell the uh, profile manager to push apps that are purchased with the. Uh, so you use the third party solutions? No. Oh. Uh, profile manager. But the key is first you have to authorize that device. And then after that, it will run any app that you push out. You just have to find it and I can upload it to the profile. See, I. Did you try using that on more than one iPad? I'd be curious about that. And that could explain why. <laughs> there, I've heard of some hacks to allow you to load the apps. And we, you know, as we were testing, we go, hey, uh, the one class needs four free apps. So I download them, you gotta push them into iTunes, and then from iTunes you pull them out into the profile manager server. And it worked fine for me. But then anybody else using it says, no, it won't launch because it says, well, Jeff is associated with these apps, and you're not Jeff, so you're not launching them. 
So then I had to say, oh crap, man, I gotta change the profile. So I just pushed the change. Apps are gone, and then everybody gets the update. I don't have to touch the, all of those machines. That's the key for us. You have to first authorize it with the Apple Authentication. Then you have to change the profile. Then you Ah, so you are loading it from the App Store with the institutional ID. Right, you load one, and then every following one can go through profile. I'll have to look into that. If you look at the logs, it even says, like, Apple Maps. <laughs> and uh, then you can load whatever you want. And then you can, they can still have their own Apple ID. You can download their own app from their own That's good. But you only get that ID will only work with 10 iOS devices. So how do you get around that? No. Uh, one is like all bets off and okay. At the end, send me an email about that. I, I'm seriously like to know about that. Okay, and there's some scary waters, and and I have a slide for that too. Okay, so any changes that you make are pushed down to devices. You don't have to tell them, okay, periodically do an update. Um, the Apple Profile Manager will push them out, and if they can't get to the device, they'll try back later. And the features that you can do is you remote lock the device. You can wipe it. You reset their passcode if they forgot it. And likewise, you can edit profiles. And a push log is also kept. Uh, you know if whatever you push made it successfully to their machine or not. And Profile Manager will harvest the username and Wi-Fi address um, because when they log in with their Wi-Fi account, it has that information now. And uh, the nice feature is you can also remote manage from an iPad or a laptop. But there's, there's a, a bug where if you have, if you're setting up a profile that you want to expire and you want to set the date, uh, the date field is kind of strange. Instead of you like selecting, say, 05 for May and then typing in 07, that doesn't work. So you have to s highlight what, what you want to change. And you got to use the up and down arrow to increment or decrement that. But you don't have those on an iPad. So that's another gotcha. So it only took us three hours to prepare the 150 iPads. And that was simply the amount of time it took to uh, lift them out of the box, get the barcode, and uh, create the spreadsheet. And, you know, staff of one needs to be more. That should be your mantra. Uh, iPad profile evolution. Well, there's no import feature. You could always export and never import. I can kind of see why, because if settings are from other versions, it could do some damage. Um, if you're going from, say, iPhone configurator utility, which apparently only applies to us, and if you go through Apple configurator to profile manager, there's some slight differences. Some of the wording's different. Some of the fields are different. Reserved keywords, some of the default settings, uh, things have been added, things have been deleted. And I'll be going over some of the conversion stuff. And like I said, I, I love the, the iPhone uh, configuration utility because I just plug it in and it sucks up everything. I don't have to mess with a spreadsheet. Will that do multiple devices at the same time? Do you have a wrestling start? 
For the iPhone configurator, you would just plug in, you'd have to individually plug in to the, right. But it sure beats uh, cutting and pasting. Um, if you wanted to, to save information for Profile Manager, you would have to go into Device List, and then the Group, and then the About, and then click on the, the System Information, and then Copy, and then Paste. You can do a save, but that saves as a web archive. So you would have, if you wanted to save the serial number and other things, you could, well, if you wanted to save the serial numbers, you'd have 150 files, but you would have to select those 150 devices independently. And I go, that's why I still use the configurator. And it works under 10.8 still. So this is actually, uh, the uh, iPhone configuration utility. This is what I've been talking about so much, where I always have this window open, and I have all the fields blanked out so you don't have, uh, you know, so the InfoSec guys are happy in the, in the campus. And so in the uh, owner name, I simply paste the logical ID that we give the machine, and then it shows up here. So we have a list of every single device, and we don't care about the identifier name because the uh, importance of that was removed in May 1st. But it gives us the serial number and then the name. So if, if somebody put in, uh, you know, Bob's iMac, it would show up as Bob's iMac. By default, all the iPads are just iPad. And to create your own uh, spreadsheet, you would just simply uh, copy the serial number and the... Uh, Wi-Fi MAC address and put it into a spreadsheet, and it's it's just so quick. It takes a little while, but it, but it's it's nice and quick. So now we're going into the the uh, profile manager itself. So when you have a client and get into it, you're going to see the the lists on the left here. So the first thing that we want to do is. Uh, select the devices, and you have two features, add placeholder and import placeholder. If you're doing one, onesies and twosies, you want to do the add placeholder. If you have a spreadsheet of all 150 devices or 600, that's how you would pull in that spreadsheet of information. And then you would see all the devices come up over here. And these would be the logical names that you assigned, and the system would uh, these would be the serial numbers that you that you gave it. And then over here is where you would click on the profile and edit, and that's where you start setting up your profiles. Why is that called a placeholder? <laughs> because it gets wiped away. <laughs> I wondered that too, and I go, well, when I first put in the device name, it could be it gets changed between what you feed it and what ultimately gets input into the list, it changes. So in essence, it really is just a placeholder. So when you're adding devices, that's where you have the serial number, UDID, IMEI, and MEID, just like I showed you with the penny on the, that information. Uh, that's why you want to go with the serial number. Because those other, you know, the UDID, it's, it's deprecated, not used by Apple anymore. And the other two are based upon your service providers, parts of countries, and things like that. So your devices may or may not have them. Typically, they may not have them. But if you have like Sprint or Horizon or all this stuff, it may show a number for that. But it's useless. Just, well, not useless, but if you use a serial number, you'll have every single machine and it'll be consistent. It'll make life simpler. And if you were to import the spreadsheet, here's where you would put in your logical names and then the serial numbers. And you need these defined fields. Without them, it's not going to work. It just needs to see them because it wants to. So now you can device, you can create device groups. So you have all these devices that you put in. So now you want to group them into more meaningful and manageable things. 
So since they're used for classes, we set them up for the professor's individual class. And we have one professor that teaches two classes, and he goes, hey, I teach my both of my classes in the same room, and I use the same settings. So just group both of my classes. And so there's the 25. And then we have the other professor that has all 105. And when you click on the group, if you click on members, you'll see every device that's listed. If you click on this button, you can perform any kind of administrative command on that device. Yes. But you gotta be careful of the hierarchy that those policies, like one policy may overwrite another. You know, the anding and oaring of devices. So you just gotta be a little clear. Um, This is the default uh, device name we gave. If they registered the machine and did not provide a name, the iPad defaults to the word iPad. If they change their name to Bob's iPad, then Bob's iPad will show up there. Yep, because what if there's six Bobs in the class? And I was thinking it'd be nice if there's like a script or something that sets that, but I'll, I'll get into that later. Can't, I can't do that because of uh, sandboxing. So uh, one of the gotchas I was kind of disappointed was the search field. So here it, it got my name uh, uh, from when I registered my Wi-Fi, and I didn't have any name specified in the about box, so just put it in iPad. So if I want to say I uh, say I had a lot more devices in here, um, such as the uh, we went back where you would have uh, the name and then the serial number. If you were to search, it only the search only works on the serial number. I don't know why. But that was kind of disappointing. Okay, so now we'll do the uh, actual profile manager settings. So these are the ones that uh, that we currently use at Notre Dame, and they're they're going to be pretty much this. Maybe they'll be the same for you. And for the general one, it's basically the default. You just want to make sure the automatic push is selected. For the passcode payload, this is what your info sector, your your campus security wants. Um, by default, there's nothing on the Apple, so you set a minimum value. What's the maximum minimum length? We set that to eight. And uh, what's the when does the auto lock set? And you can change those to whatever you want. And for the network payload, this is where we actually configure Apple TV in the classrooms. So we don't want the students to know what the uh, the router is for inside the classroom so that somebody can be outside the room and take over the the display projection uh, display. So we only push down the uh, network settings to the individual class users. So since we have two different classes using two different Apple TVs, um, their network settings are slightly different uh, based upon the class that they're in. Pardon me? Don't know that. No, we don't. Yeah. And I think that's what uh, a lot of the places were having. Um, what we did find is if there was ever a software update, it would blow away the screensaver disabled setting. I guess some of the settings would be restored back to factory default. One of those is screen saving. We disable that because the professors get mad where they're walking around with their iPad and all of a sudden it goes into screensaver mode. But we've had the uh, iPad 
uh, the Apple TV go down, but we didn't see any problems with, when they came back up. And VPN payload, we set this so that the students can use their, their iPad off of campus and uh, be completely authenticated. And this, this uh, uh, will be pretty much similar to what you see. And we have um, Google Mail for students. So these are the settings. Uh, do, do anybody have Google accounts for their students here? OK. So these settings could be real close to what you need. And there's two parts of it because it's kind of extremely long. And so that'll help you out. And for faculty and staff, we have you know, the on-campus email uh, exchange server. So those settings will be different. And uh, you can look at the slides and grab the settings uh, and, and save you a couple of hours of debugging. And that's just the second part of the, the faculty staff. And then this is the uh, conversion from the iPhone to, uh, the, to the profile manager. It's similar to the Apple configurator. And what you'll see, and, and so if you look at your settings in Apple configurator versus what's available in the profile manager, you're going to see maybe the wording is different. Maybe the order of some of those are different. You might see some things disappear in Profile Manager or things that are extra. And they're kind of minor, but they're, they're sort of an irritant. And one of the, the big things is in the past, when you wanted to prompt the user for something, you would simply leave that field blank, where now you mostly have to have a reserve word to say it'll be supplied through some by their authentication. And that takes a little while to get used to. So the passcode, and I'm just going to you know, fly through these real quick. Uh, Wi-Fi conversion, um, there isn't one anymore. <laughs> so you don't need it. We used to say, our preferred Wi-Fi is the ND secure. Well, you can't do that anymore. It's just disabled. You know, you just don't have that feature. You either tell it what the login name and password is to the Wi-Fi, or you don't use it. So we just let the normal, um, we let the normal airport uh, detect the the Wi-Fi zones. That would be from the, yeah, that would be, yeah, they would be uh, uh, checked against Active Directory, authenticated through there. And uh, VPN, some minor changes to that. And I'm just going to whiz by this. And the exchange uh, conversion from students and for faculty. Now, we have... Okay, profile manager issues. Some of the weird stuff we saw. Uh, as I said earlier, if you wanted to, we, ha we have students that have their own iPads, but we want to provide them with a VPN so they can access off, -side of ca off of campus. And we also want them to be able to use the uh, AirPlay for displaying their stuff. So this is where we would set the uh, automatic expiration to like a week after graduation. And to do that, you need to use those up and down cursors, which are not available on an iPad. And if you wanted to export any kind of information, it'll create a web archive format. There's, there's no button that'll say, give me all the information you want in spreadsheet form. It just doesn't exist. And for administrators, if you're sharing a service, if, if you're sharing the service with other departments, so we have four other departments that are using the, the profile manager, so there's four administrators. Their, their administrators can access our stuff. Our administrators can access their stuff. There's no, no group lockout. It's like a plain Jane system, you know? It's just 
Don't screw with their settings, they won't screw with your settings. And you'll get the busy cursor. Um, it is a web app. And if your network burps or is slow, or if you're doing a lot of activity, you will occasionally get the beach ball of death. So just quit the browser, relaunch it, and you're back in. And here's the iPad device issue. Very, very important. The iPad was designed for single owner usage. That's why we're having all these problems with, with uh, free apps and purchase apps. And if I am a student and you gave me the iPad and I use my Apple ID and I, I purchased a song or if I downloaded a free app or I purchased an app, when that happens, there is a 90-day account lockout that happens. So if a second person were to use that machine, they would be locked out from doing anything in iTunes with their account. This is big because we're coming off of summer, and they will trigger that 90 days, and our semester begins like August 14th, the 90 days from the summer is going to be November 1. So there's going to be like 66 days where students can't access stuff. So this is a problem uh, that we have, and we have to figure it out. I have no clue of how to do it. And the bottom one, that's also a killer. Um, as you open up the, uh, as you configure the device, it'll say, would you like to create your Apple account now? No, don't tell your people don't do that. Because if you do it that account, it will say this account is associated with with this ID. And you can only do it three times, and then you won't be able to access uh buy anything from iTunes again forever. So if you want to lock out students from things, we can revisit. Here's where you can make all the settings to say, oh, don't use the camera. You can't load apps and things like that. So if you need that, that'll work fine. And here's some like feature requests. You know, as I was, as I was working all this, I said, I wish I had a export summary data button. And it would be nice that I could plug the iPad into uh, the machine that I use and say, hey, just suck this information up into the profile manager. And it would be nice if free apps worked. And it would be nice to have a broadcast message where I could say, OK, uh, Joe Schmo's class, it's time to turn in your iPads. And it would be broadcast to them. So these are feature requests. And if you need stuff like that, or if you would like to see these, uh, submit an enhancement request. Submit it as a bug. And be sure to say it's an enhancement request. And as Apple gets more of these, maybe they'll roll those in. And then it's when it's time to return the iPads. You want to send, you want to let your professors do all the footwork. They have the class list of all the students. So you say, hey, professor, um, you know, we want to collect the iPads. Uh, please send this to all the students. We, we want them all by this date. Have, if there's anything they want to keep, have them remove it. And we let them re restore it back to factory. Why not? You know, you don't have to do it. I mean, we can. But there's always some person who's, who needs their iPad later for uh, something. So you don't want to do all, the whole group at once and say, whoops. So we have them with a piece of paper and an email address so that we make sure that when it comes back, we, if they're missing a power supply, we write it on that piece of paper and then deal with that later. And of course, they got to return the cable and optional uh, the bag. This, you want this. This is going to be very, very important for you. Yes, no. We gave out 132 of these. We got five of these back. We don't have those. So we got to replace those. So maybe when you're collecting them or when you're sending out the message, you could send that, something like that to them. And here's the, uh, what we observe, the metrics in the class. Um, we 
physically added 24 iPads to the server. And it turned out 23 were released, were released and one was left over, not used. So 20 iPads were given to students, two iPads to teacher assistants, one student dropped class, 21 registered with the profile manager, two did not. The two that did not was the, the student that dropped the class and the, one of the teacher assistants that got the iPad later on in the semester. Class three, those were the bad boys. Um, there were 115 iPads allo allo allotted, 109 released, six of them weren't used. So we did pretty good keeping track of how much they actually needed. And uh, 101 went to the least to students, three iPads went to the teacher assistants, and five students dropped the class. So 67 were good citizens and registered with the profile manager. 42 did not, so we had to hunt them down. And then, you know, interestingly, 24 students use their own iPads. So if those 24 students didn't have their own iPad, that would have bumped the allotment up an extra 24. So it's kind of good to talk with the teacher. Yes? Were you able to follow up to the 42 no, <laughs> because we had a cart collecting them. <laughs> so for the uh, reported iPad problems, very minor. Uh, they didn't have enough space to install the apps. One dead power supply, Apple replaced it under warranty. Uh, one student got a cable stuck in the keyboard. We pulled it out. One of the cases wouldn't close. We swapped it out. A student broke a plug. But then there were numerous issues with iTunes U courseware application. So that was a discussion between Apple and the professor to resolve those issues. So what will we do differently? Well, everything that I said is what we would have done. So unpackage each iPad, so physically open them up, uh, barcode, add the iPad case, uh, collect the model number, serial number, Wi-Fi address, get the roster stuff. Um, not much else. Uh, policies, procedures, accountability. Um, how to reserve the iPads for use. You know, these are what your managers should be doing. You know, these are questions you're going to ask them. What happens when a cable doesn't come? What do we do? Um, how many spares are needed? Uh, what if they're used for other things? And then, yeah, you know, what do we do for storage? How do we grow the service? How do you measure the service? Who owns it? Uh, what kind of licensing for how long? So that's about it. In a nutshell. <laughs> so the uh, the three items with the with the Apple licensing, you know, the the iTunes account, those are killers. You know, resetting the ninety days, but uh, uh, we liked it and uh, it turned out pretty good using Profile Manager. Any questions? Okay, thank you very much. Oh. Uh, I wonder if it's associated with the corporate ID versus an individual. Oh, you designated a corporate one to use. Well, that's good to know because I was playing with the card of 30. I would need to create like three special accounts. So now maybe I can get away with one. Okay, that's great. That's great to know. Thank you for sharing that. Do. There's the email right up there. <laughs> well, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, I will add that to the notes, which they will publish, so you'll get those. And, and like I said, if, if you're very new to this, uh, I think you'll find all the sheets, like some, some of you that already have it, some of the stuff may be, oh, we already did that. But for, for you starting out, now you have like a nice little from A to Z how to do things, and you won't say, ha, ah, and freak out. 
yeah, so when I get your email, I'll add that into, uh, I'll add that to this. And then everybody, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you.